Hi, I'm Tony Poulos and I'm here at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. Today I have me Rafael de Ferman, who is the Senior Vice President of Network Infrastructure Europe at Nokia. Rafael, welcome. Thank you, hello. AI seems to be the thing that everyone's talking about at this event. What do you think? Is it overhyped or is it real? And also, how do you see the way AI is impacting the way networks are run in the future operationally? To be honest, it's difficult to say if it is going to be a hype or not. Time will tell. Um, I don't think it matters too much. A little bit of healthy hype is good because it focuses people in new things and things that are actually going to happen in one shape or another. To be honest, we do see uh, AI happening today. We do see AI in multiple areas, improving processes, uh, getting solutions out of uh, data that is too big to handle for human beings. And in fact, uh, here around, you can already see products that are using AI today. So there is something into AI. I, I can understand why people are talking about it. Also, if, uh, if we talk about fixed wireless access as well, is it really gaining traction? I mean, it's about time that it has. Is it gaining traction? And I know that Nokia has been very successful in the Nordics with the technology, but how can that be replicated elsewhere in the world? Do you think that the high penetration of fiber in some places will limit its appeal? No, I think fixed wireless access is, is happening and it is happening now. And the reason is very simple. In the past, people were rolling out fiber. Some countries are ahead, some countries are a little bit behind, but they were all rolling fiber. And their thought was, I roll out fiber now, and there will be a moment when I've covered all what is techno-economically feasible with fiber, and then I will do fixed wireless access for this final 15, 20%. But okay, you do know that 15, 20% today. I mean, you know what are the places that will not be economically viable with fiber, so why wait? So what people are thinking is, okay, maybe I can start fixed wireless access in parallel with the fiber rollout. And what we have seen in the last few quarters is that people have still carried on with the normal fiber rollout, but they have started the fixed wireless access rollout today without waiting for fiber to be complete. And of course, that represents a big boom in the fixed wireless access demand in Europe. You spend a lot of time with your customers, and how do you see the next stages of security and resilience of CSP networks? You know, what are they saying to you? It's, it's really a hot topic. It is a very hot topic, to be honest, probably for the wrong reasons. I mean, we all understand that what's happening in Europe is not what we would like to be happening in Europe, but actually we talk about security all the time. We do multiple things for them. Um, the two biggest that we are uh, proposing and that we are discussing with many people is how can we encrypt data so that data is not hacked and how can we encrypt it so that even quantum computers cannot hack the algorithms that we have today and we have solutions for that. The second thing we're talking about uh, with people is what about denial of service? What about those tsunamis of packets that go and clog a network or a server? And we can also offer solutions for that. And sadly, I think the, the world is needing both of those more than one year ago, two years ago. As I said, you spend a lot of time discussing technical strategy with the CSPs across Europe. You get to know them very well and even beyond Europe. But what is keeping them up at night? Oh, that's a very good question. So I think at this point of time, the biggest problem for service providers is how are they able to expand the money in? The money out, they know. They need to keep investing in the network. They're investing in expanding the IP and optical networks to 800 gig interfaces. They're rolling out fiber. As we just said, they're rolling out fiber and in parallel, they're rolling out fixed wireless access. They understand all that. But how can they monetize those assets? How can they get the end subscribers, the enterprises, use those assets in a way that increases the ARPU, increases the revenue for service providers, so that all the investments that they are making make good financial sense? I think that's the equation that they're all trying to solve in the best possible way. I want to come back to the AI issue just one more time. I'd like to know more about how AI is going to impact the way the networks are run in the future particularly operationally? In the present. N networks are being changed by AI today. I'll give you a couple of examples. So today we are able to detect what are the attacks that I was referring to before in a network through AI. Some of the attacks that we see today are not the traditional attacks that uh, you know the bad guys would do by replicating packets in a farm of PCs. Many of the attacks today are botnets. 
they come from, from appliances that all of us have in our houses connected to internet. And of course, we never change the password. I don't know if you ever change the password of your air conditioning, but I never did, right? So those are very easy to attack and those send packets. And those packets are actually the ones that are these days clogging servers, uh, routers, computers. AI is extremely good at finding patterns of traffic that are very difficult to spot with other means. And through AI, we're able to detect those attacks and we're able to stop them literally in seconds. And we do the same thing about how we manage the network, how we operate it, how we preempt failures in a fiber before it happens. And all of that is very, very difficult if you don't have AI engines behind it. So it really is the age of AI. It's happening. I think it is the age of AI. Maybe it's another hype, maybe it isn't, but there's something there we should be working on. Rafael, thank you very much for being with me today. Uh, it's a pleasure. And welcome to Spain, my home country. Thank you.